The last lesson helped us trace how the Jacobins came to power from being a political club in the French society. We learnt that the Jacobins were vehemently against monarchical rule and they were not at all appeased with the constitutional monarchical setup that was instituted by the French constitution of 1791. And so it was in August 1792 that they now laid an insurrection against the monarch. And soon after the National Constituent Assembly was replaced by the National Convention. Now, this national convention was very radical in nature. It came up with the French constitution of 1793 that for the first time introduced universal male suffrage in France. And we also learned how in the January of 1793, King Louis XVI was publicly executed and it was followed by his wife Mary Antoinette's execution in October 1793. Now, we ended that lesson by talking about how this period of happiness was soon replaced by a period of instability and uncertainty in the French society. Now, we have learned that the estate system was abolished, the monarchical rule was overthrown and in fact, the monarch himself along with his wife was publicly executed. Now, why do you think was there still any kind of uncertainty? instability and anarchy in the French society? Well, these are the lines of discussion that we will be taking up in this lesson. Now, following the creation of the first French Republic that happened after the National Constituent Assembly was replaced by the National Convention, this National Convention was now soon led by the radical Jacobin Maximilian Robespierre. Now we have learned that Maximilian Robespierre was the head of the Jacobins and he was very radical in nature. In fact, he was very extremist in spirit. He was in no way willing to enter any kind of agreement, negotiation or any kind of understanding. Instead, he just wanted to establish his own say. And when he now came to power, he introduced a very coercive system of surveillance and punishment. Now, why do you think did he do so? He did so in order to root out the enemies within. Now, when the National Convention was laid by Robespierre, he began to believe that there were many people within the government itself who were opponents of this radical, this republican government. He believed that there were many people whose sentiments were still with the erstwhile monarchy, which is why Robespierre now took it upon himself to root out, as in to throw out all these enemies who were within the government as well as within the French society. Now, how do you think did this new Jacobin government manage to root out the enemies as they put it? Well, we have learned that a system of surveillance and punishment was introduced by Robespierre. And if any person was suspected of being a political offender, of being a political opponent of the Jacobin government, then that person was immediately imprisoned, following which that person was then taken to a court called the Revolutionary Tribunal. Now, in this Revolutionary Tribunal, all political offenders were tried and if they were found guilty, well, most of them were found guilty even if they were innocent, they were then executed or exiled. Now, this system of surveillance and punishment under Robespierre was very strict and coercive because whole lot of people was deemed as political offenders when they had nothing to do with the government, when they had nothing to do with the erstwhile monarchy. But well, as the say of Robespierre went, he executed whoever he wanted. He executed whoever he categorized as a political opponent. Now, before proceeding with this lesson and finding out more about this period, let me ask you a question. 
the court where the political opponents of Robespierre were tried was called the Revolutionary Tribunal, French Directory, Manor Courts or Church Courts. Which of these following do you think is the correct answer? Well, the correct answer is Revolutionary Tribunal. This was a court that was instituted or established by the National Convention in order to try the political offenders and opponents of Maximilian Robespierre. Now, the execution of the French monarch filled the masses' minds with a new streak of hope. They thought that the abolition of the feudal system along with the execution of the monarch would now bring France a better day, would now bring France out of the former period of darkness. Because they were very badly oppressed during the old regime when the absolute monarch ruled over them with very ruthless and strict measures. But they were very unfortunate to believe that the following period would be one of stability and peace. Because we have learned that Robespierre being very radical and brutal as he was, he kept on executing a whole lot of people. He deemed a whole lot of people as the political offenders in the state, as his political opponents, even if they were innocent of the crimes for which they were suspected. So, between 1793 and 1794, France was now witness to a series of massacres and executions. And do you know what this period came to be known as? Rightly pointed out, this period was known as the Reign of Terror. Because the masses were terrorized by the series of public executions that kept on happening during this time. Well, Robespierre believed that he could use terror as a weapon in order to bring everything under his control, in order to bring the entire population under his control. He believed that by the fear that was instilled in the masses' minds because of all these massacres and executions, even his political opponents, even the dissidents in the state would be afraid to speak up their opinions. Now, the masses had no real say in this. Now, France at this point of time was a republic as we had mentioned and by a republic it was mandated that the masses were supposed to have their own say in the political process. But unfortunately, it was Robespierre and only his supporters who had the final say in the French society at this point of time. More than 300,000 people were executed and France was now plunged into a period of shadowy darkness. And so, during this period, public executions became so frequent that the guillotine now became recognized as the symbol of the revolution during the reign of terror. Well, this is a guillotine and this instrument of execution, this instrument of terror was named after Dr. Guillotine who had designed this. Now, in a guillotine you can see there are two poles which support a very sharp blade and when a person was put in this tray, this sharp blade cut and severed the person's head. So, this was an instrument of public execution and it became so frequent that this guillotine now became the symbol of the reign of terror. So, from this can you understand how horrifying and terrible a phase this reign of terror was because the people were no longer able to live beyond this fear of being executed, beyond this fear of being massacred. Now, Robespierre, as we have learned, was all set to undo the existing French social order. Now, the existing French social order thrived on the basis of discriminations and feudal privileges. So, it was the member of the third estate who was exploited and oppressed by the members of the first and the second estate. Now, this was the estate system that was prevalent in France during the old regime and this was abolished earlier on. But when Robespierre came to power, he now wanted to abolish and swipe away all traces of feudal privileges. 
so he was now wanting to have a very revolutionary kind of government where any kind of discrimination on the basis of social class would be completely abolished and removed to this end the new government now put a ceiling on both wages and prices of different things now what is a price ceiling now if a price ceiling is put on some particular product then that product could not be sold at a higher price now let me explain this to you so that it becomes clearer now suppose you love your favorite packet of cookies and i put a price ceiling of rupees 10 on it which means that this packet of cookies cannot be sold at a price that is higher than rupees 10 so rupees 10 would be the price ceiling that packet of cookies cannot be sold at a price higher than rupees 10 now when this new government put a ceiling on both the wages as well as the prices of different goods the surge in prices of different commodities could now be controlled and different commodities that were initially sold at very high and exorbitant prices were now sold at much cheaper prices during the rule of this new government that was headed by maximilian robespierre Now we have learned that economic crisis was never really leaving France because France was firstly involved in many wars with different European monarchies and then during the French Revolution and subsequently during the French Revolutionary Wars France was being severely devastated by all the huge economic losses Because of all these reasons food shortages also became a very big issue that the poor sections of the society had to grapple with. As a result of this now meat and bread were rationed because this was done as a response to the prevalent food shortages in the French society and in this way the government believed that by rationing meat and bread they would be able to feed the masses with these food items now the government was set to abolish all traces of monarchy as we have been discussing all the while it was also abolishing all traces of discrimination between people now earlier on the white flour that was used for the making of bread was now abolished because the white flour could no longer be used to make breads instead all the people of france were now supposed to have the pain de egalite which means the equality bread now this equality bread was made of whole wheat so from this we can understand how the discrimination between people that existed with regard to the food they ate was also removed during the rule of this new government In our last lesson on the Jacobins we learned how the Jacobins set themselves apart from the fashionable sections of the society through their sartorial choices as in through the clothes they wore. We also learned about how they removed discriminations on the basis of the food they ate by having the equality bread. But these were not the only ways of removing discriminations and the existing social orders. because the forms of speech and address also underwent radical changes during the rule of the new government traditional french titles like monsieur and madame which were used to address the aristocrats and elites were now abolished monsieur stands for sir in english and madame stands for lady or madam in english and all these traditional titles that were associated and ascribed to the aristocrats and elites were now removed from the french society instead came into being the new titles citoyen and citoin which were to refer to all the people of france as citizens so they were now supposed to be held and seen on equal grounds 
earlier on these aristocratic titles used to discriminate among people of different social classes and now these new words which meant citizen was supposed to hold all the citizens together on the same ground and the citizens would now have only one affiliation and that would be to their own country they would no longer be affiliated to or associated with particular social classes now along with being anti monarchical these jacobins were also anti clergy because it was the clergy that comprised the first estate and exploited and oppressed the members of the third estate during the old regime and seeing the clergy as a symbol of power and oppression the jacobins were all set to destroy the clergy and its possessions and so all churches were shut down and during this time this church buildings were now converted into barracks and offices which served the national convention now robespierre assumed that he will be able to weaponize terror for as long as he wanted to bring everything and everyone under his control but he was wrong to assume so people will be afraid for one day for two days for a month or for even a year but after that point people will no longer be afraid because people will be afraid of public executions people will be afraid of being massacred but how long will people be afraid if they are pushed to the age it's inevitable that they will now want to fight back at one point of time they will now want to march forward now when robespierre was weaponizing terror in order to fill the minds of the people with fear and terror for the government it was he who was actually afraid of the power of people and it is for this reason that he wanted to make them afraid of his power through the system of surveillance and coercion so that no one could resent his rule so that no one could speak up against his government now robespierre's policies were very uncompromising and relentless because he was not a person to enter into any kind of negotiation of sorts to enter into any kind of agreement whenever he thought that one person needs to be executed that person would be executed and he was not a person to come back on his words and people now began to resent this government because this government did not keep people under its control through popular sentiments and by using terror this government was now slowly falling apart here you can see how mass executions became the order of the day during the reign of terror and people were slowly disgusted with what was happening in france they were no longer willing to accept robespierre and his uncompromising attitude towards all the people now simply on account of his tyrannical actions robespierre now started becoming increasingly unpopular now it was the jacobin club which was led by robespierre which became the most influential political club at one point of time but when the national convention came to power absolute power was concentrated in the hands of robespierre alone he did whatever he wanted the masses had no say in anything be that in the political affair or be that in the socio economic affairs and people were now very very disgusted and are at the same time frustrated with this period of darkness with this period of violence and blood which is why robespierre now started becoming very unpopular among the masses as sentiments kept on surging against robespierre and he became increasingly unpopular robespierre was finally arrested on july 27 1794 and it was this date july 27 1794 that marked the end of the reign of terror with the arrest of robespierre he was guillotined the day after that is to say he was guillotined on july 28 1794 so it was the same instrument that he used to kill hundreds and thousands of people where so much blood was shed that robespierre himself was killed
So, Robespierre's arrest and subsequent death marked the end of the reign of terror. But the question that arises here is that what followed this? This was a very dark epoch in the history of France. What followed the reign of terror? Let us now talk about the political events that immediately followed the arrest and execution of Robespierre. Now we can understand how a series of changes were taking place in the French society and the French political setup was stuck in a state of flux because so many changes were happening. The traditional estate system was uprooted, the monarchy was overthrown, different governments came to power and then everything was followed by this reign of terror which was most horrible and most terrifying of all phases and with the fall of the Jacobin government now power and control over France went into the hands of the wealthier middle class. Now the wealthier middle class was persecuted during the reign of terror. Now we have learnt that the middle class that comprised the bourgeoisie was educated and affluent. The middle class members also held a lot of lands and property. Now when this former government that was comprising only the people of the less prosperous sections of the society came to an end, these middle class people now seized the opportunity to establish their own power over the French society. Now as we keep moving from points A to B to C, we can see that these new governments that were coming to power were all set to undo the existing social order. Now when the national convention came to power, it was against the French constitution of 1791 that accorded political and electoral rights only to the propertied men in the French society. To counter that, the French constitution of 1793 that was instituted by the National Convention introduced universal male suffrage. Now that constitution of 1793 wasn't really actualized in the sense that it wasn't really implemented during the reign of terror. Now the subsequent French constitution of 1795 was more conservative in nature. It is understandable from the fact that since the wealthier middle class was in power now, the constitution was also conservative in nature and there remained no electoral rights for the non property sections. So it was again back to where it started as in the people who held property were the ones who could vote for the legislative bodies. Now this new constitution provided for a bicameral legislature or two legislative councils and these two legislative councils then appointed the French directory in the year 1795. Now this was an executive body of five members only. So from this we can understand how this was very exclusive in nature because only five members got to exercise their say and opinion in the French directory that was instituted by the French constitution of 1795. Now during this point of time France was embroiled in a state of turmoil in all possible respects. People thought that with the fall of the Jacobin government the directory would be able to restore political calm and stability to the French society. But the directory failed to do so. It could not restore economic and political stability in France. And this in turn paved the way for Napoleon Bonaparte to assume power as the Emperor of France in the year 1804. So this now brings us to an end of our discussion on the reign of terror. We learned what this reign of terror was that took place between 1793 and 1794. Now during this reign of terror, the national convention that was laid by the Jacobin leader Maximilian Robespierre saw the execution and massacre of more than 300,000 people. So many people were publicly executed every other day. 
now people were resenting this rule but they were not able to do anything but after being pushed to the edge these people now revolted and robespierre himself was executed and that brought an end to the jacobin government which was immediately followed by the directory now the directory failed to restore political and economic stability in the french society which eventually paved the way for napoleon to emerge as the emperor of france in the year 1804 this also brings us to an end of our discussion on the french revolution itself because we have traced all the major events that led to that entailed and that followed the french revolution now in a subsequent lesson we will be looking at this revolution from a very new perspective don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon you can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the delta step app to learn one to one with our amazing teachers or to get access to all our 5000 plus amazing videos as per your school syllabus master each topic with our adaptive practice technology get million plus questions with step by step solutions and unlimited mock tests get all your doubts resolved instantly learn via games and win amazing prizes like playstations and ipads so at delta step learning is not just fun and easy it's rewarding too so register for free now